hello again welcome to my youtube channel today i have in front of me a switch mode power supply from a company called fossil it's a very good quality company i have seen their power supplies in many medical grade instruments and when i cracked it open i was not disappointed it's it's got all the bells and whistles uh, as far as uh, power supply is concerned it's got some serious uh, input interference filtering uh, it's got uh, active power factor control uh, it's got a thigh resistor which i suspect is uh, responsible for the uh, active power factor control circuit and uh, here it's got the inductor and uh, two mosfets in parallel uh, which I believe is the sw uh, main switching uh, semiconductor and it's got uh, four feedback optocouplers uh, three of them I can uh, locate uh, one is for switching on and switching off the power supply over here and there's one, another one uh, there's another three over here uh, one is for voltage feedback and another one is for over voltage protection and uh, the fourth one i am yet to find out what it is for but uh, we'll uh, find out once we get into the details of this power supply but uh, and it uh, can give it has uh, two outputs uh, 24 volts output at uh, 9 amperes and 14 amperes maximum and a 5 volt uh, output at uh, 3 amperes so it's uh, it's got some serious power uh, but what i why i am interested in this power supply actually there's nothing wrong with this power supply it's working perfectly uh, the reason that i wanted to make a video about this is because of the active power factor control circuit on this uh, power supply now i know the basics of the active power factor control but i have i have not seen it in uh, action uh, i know that it forces the current waveform to follow the waveform uh, follow the wave volt, voltage waveform so that uh, the load in this case the input uh, circuit of the power supply appears like a resistive load to the line uh, voltage the 230 volts so that the power factor is uh, is, is driven towards unity there's more efficiency on the power supply so i think that's uh, the basic idea of active power factor control so that uh, you get much more efficient uh, uh, output from the power supply but i wanted to see it in action and uh, i didn't uh, uh, i didn't have a power supply uh, earlier to check it so this is my chance so i'm going to probe this power supply and see how active power factor control actually works and uh, the other thing is uh, i thought it would be best if we can compare this power supply with a power supply that does not have active power factor control and see the differences i think that's the best way of seeing what uh, active power factor control is uh, really capable of so I have this uh, cheap Chinese power supply uh, it's got uh, 12 volts output and it's also universal input I think uh, so it, but it does not have a active power factor control circuit and so I'm going to probe this one and this one uh, and compare how this appears to the line voltage and uh, as opposed to this more advanced power supply ap appears to the line voltage so and uh, which one would be more introducing more noise to the line line main lines uh, we can uh, determine of course it's uh, we know that uh, this is more noisy than this uh, well designed well made power supply but we just want to see it uh, for ourselves and uh, the other thing is that we are, I'm going to run both of them through 110 volts, though we are living in the 230 uh, volts uh, 
uh, part of the world but I'm going to run them both through 110 volts because my oscilloscope is only capable of handling 300 volts maximum <coughs> and I know and we know that <coughs> sorry we know that uh, 230 volts rectified uh, peak to peak would be somewhere around in the range of 320 uh, volts and active power factor control of, of this uh, power supply is going to be even ha higher than that and I, I don't want to take that risk with the power, my oscilloscope so I'm going to run, run them through 110 volts and uh, observe the wave, uh, voltage waveforms so it's not going to be any different than 230 volts it just it will be just higher voltage uh, lower voltage so that is my uh, idea and what I'm going to do is I have already soldered one uh, resistor very low ohms resistor about 0.47 ohms resistor to the input of this power supply and the same <coughs> setup is uh, done for this power supply and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the current wave from across this this resistor and I'm going to measure the voltage wave from uh, right at the input of the power supply of course I can do this because of the isolated uh, inputs of the Tektronix uh, TPS 2024 uh, oscilloscope if if uh, so it uh, it acts uh, more or less like uh, four uh, individual multimeters uh, with isolated ground so that is why we can uh, connect multiple probes uh, to multiple points in the, uh, power, uh, in the uh, test circuit without blowing anything up so that's a very uh, huge advantage that I have with the oscilloscope with the uh, isolated uh, grounds so that's uh, the basic setup uh, and uh, let's uh, let's first uh, hook up the oscilloscope to the uh, this uh, Chinese power supply and see what the voltage waveform is going to be like so I have my uh, uh, oscilloscope set up here uh, it's uh, on and uh, it's uh, I will switch on two channels of the oscilloscope so that we can uh, observe uh, the current waveform uh, side by side with the voltage waveform so that's the plan and uh, let's uh, hook up everything up and see what we can uh, find out about these two power supplies uh, the earlier background was <coughs> giving off too much glare so I changed the background so now I have connected everything up uh, as I told you earlier I'm uh, measuring the current waveform across these uh, green resistors uh, it's uh, the combined resistance is about 0 0.47 ohms uh, and uh, then I'm measuring the uh, voltage waveform across the AC lines uh, negative uh, neutral and live so let's uh, go to the oscilloscope and uh, see what the uh, waveform uh, looks like yeah, so this is the uh, waveform the yellow trace is the current waveform and uh, the blue one is the voltage as uh, this is uh, there when there is no load on the uh, power supply and as you can see the current peaks are only coinciding with the peak voltage so during uh, this point to this point nothing is uh, conducting and uh, when the current or the voltage reaches its peak only there is a current spike and this is uh, happening so let's uh, let's connect a relatively high load on, onto it and see how it changes I got the oscilloscope on average position so that's why it's taking a bit of time so now as you can see the uh, current peaks uh, increased in size and but still it's uh, it's just a, a current spike 
it is uh, not following the voltage waveform and uh, as a as a result the power factor would be low on this uh, uh, cheap uh, chinese power supply and uh, it's uh, so that is how a normal uh, uh, low quality power supply would function so now we have a reference uh, so we will uh, go to the other power supply and see how if uh, whether it is different and how it is different but before that i am going to save these two waveforms uh, as my reference waveforms so that i can uh, compare it with the other one uh, save channel 1 waveform as uh, reference a and then i'm going to save channel 2 as reference b okay now we have both waveforms uh, saved we can uh, we can uh, go and check the other power supply uh, let's uh, before that let's uh, see if our reference waveforms are there so reference a is there which is the current waveform and reference b is also there which is the voltage waveform okay now let's uh, connect everything to the coastal power supply the better design power supply and see how it differs from this one now i have the coastal power supply uh, connected to the oscilloscope uh, similarly, I am measuring the current through that white resistor, which is about 0.4, uh, 0.47 ohms, and uh, the voltage across the input line. Uh, and uh, I also got a uh, this uh, load resistor connected up, but now it is uh, still it is not uh, connected as a load. Uh, first, we will see the waveform without the load, and then we will connect the load and see what. Uh, how it changes so this is the waveform uh, of the supposedly better uh, designed uh, power supply with power factor correction uh, right off the bat you can see that uh, it is little better than the earlier power supply uh, the current uh, even without any load the current waveform is sort of following the voltage waveform not that much uh, improvement but it is uh, uh, better than the, uh, it, uh, the, the early power supply so uh, let's uh, let's bring up the reference waveform for current and see how much it is different <clears throat> so that's the current waveform waveform of the earlier power supply as you can see it's uh, there is uh, some improvement in the positive going half cycle uh, but not much of a difference and uh, now we will put a load on this power supply and see if it is any different yes now there is clearly a difference when the when the when, when the power the power supply is loaded only the real uh, power factor correction uh, kicks in uh, now we, you can see that it is definitely much better than the earlier current waveform and it is let's say it's it's uh, better but not uh, exactly following the voltage waveform but certainly better than the other power supply now for reference we'll bring up the earlier current waveform again yeah so as you can see the increase in the current waveform starts way before the before the earlier waveform and it is more or less uh, following the voltage waveform so thereby definitely improving the power factor of the power supply so there you are real power factor correction in action so
was I never seen it in action before so now I have an idea about how what it is capable of I don't know whether it is uh, making that much of a difference but uh, certainly better than uh, power supplies without power factor correction.